Well, let me see, Mr. Journey, and I think uh, we're all here except John Wellman, and you brought in the Queen, so there's a kind of a, nice a, a renewed edition. Here's one right here. Well, now. And, and then Hazel is here. Yeah, let's see. I guess that you haven't met at least two people in this group. Um, begin with the one who's been here the longest, Nick Minninger. I, uh, I met him just a few minutes ago. Okay, take it back. Have you met Hazel? <laughs> no. Okay, uh, Hazel Ellis uh, came down yesterday from Davenport, and she's considering coming in as a student. I don't know whether by, by this time I have talked to her after she's been here all day. She may be utterly out, <laughs> out of the humor by now, or she may be glad to show us How do you do, Hazel? How do you do? I'm just glad it's Judith, Hazel. I'm glad to meet you. Let's see, do we have everybody else here now? Yes. How many we got left in this this little band after uh, the, the depletions in the ranks? Eleven today. Twelve. Do you count John? Not counting him. Yeah. Peter. Well, and not counting Hazel. What? Well, not counting Hazel because he was John. I see. You mean there are eleven students here today then? Not counting John. Well, there are twelve. Twelve. Not counting John or Hazel. Or Gladys. Or do you like to go around the room and count them? <laughs> Look, you guys, count off and let me see it. Who's here on the left? Count off and let me see it. One. Bay. Two. Three. Look, you people, see, you can save me the trouble of counting it. Give me the number. Just call the number. Who's after D to three? Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Oh, wait a minute, I'll be out there. Yeah, you're nine. Who's next for ten? Ten. Eleven. Okay, we've got 13 people here. Right. <laughs> <coughs> well, I had a respite in my legislative activities, and I wanted to talk to you people a little bit uh, about a thing or two. I uh, sort of use this, you know, as a as a way of relaxing from talking with legislators or or else I relax by talking to legislators from this one. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, we got our bill ensuring the control of the building through the House yesterday and it comes up now to, for the Senate but there's a, there's a day or two between, well a day between. And I spent some time over the legislature today but this afternoon seemed like a good time to do some talking. I wonder if any of you have anything you want to ask me about tomorrow before I get into discussing the subject I have to discuss with you. Mr. Jane? Sir? I would imagine we would wear about the same type of clothes that we've been wearing. Now, well, the one general rule, as I said uh, yesterday, if you'll, if you'll keep it in mind, is a good one. I, I don't want us to... I don't want us to put on the dog particularly, uh, nor do I want us to try to underemphasize or be modest. I would like for them to see us exactly as we are. Uh, I think this is the way we make the best impression if they really see us just as we are. In short, I, I feel very proud of what we've got. I'm not at least ashamed of it, and I think uh, at the same time, it, uh, I think it makes a good impression. So I'd like for them to see it just as this. Mr. Jenkins, sure, ma'am. Uh, are they going to stop that drilling tomorrow? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I hope. Yes. Yeah. I have at one time or another talked to you people about what I consider to be the principal purposes of an orientation center for the blind. Now, I wonder if you can, some of you who are veterans in this outfit ought to be able to help me out on this, and some of you who are more nearly veterans ought to be able to. And in fact, all except the newest of the recruits. I wouldn't expect Nick to know what I've said about this, because he hasn't been in class uh, when I have before, and I wouldn't expect Hazel to, obviously, because she never has been there either. <clears throat> Do any of you remember what I outlined at one time as what I consider to be the three principal reasons for having one of these centers? Well, if you don't, why, then let's start trying to find out what they are, or what any reasons <coughs> are. Well, 
know, I think we were running a quick repair meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at all of yours, I talked it to you. I want to know <laughs> if none of you have any reason why you're here or ever have been, why. <laughs> It's a poor thing for me to gain solace of, but it's what happens to you, you know. I, but I'm not through. Thank you, gentlemen. Sir? I don't know that I'm getting at what uh, we really want, but the principal reason I'm here is because uh, of the loss of sight where I couldn't uh, do the things I'd like to do, or uh, what I want to say is to get back to where I'm self-sufficient and self-supporting. Right. Now, now, how do you do that, Lyle? I agree with you. That's the overall purpose. Now, and, uh, what are you trying to go? Why couldn't you do that just as well at home as you could here, is the point. I just didn't have the technique in doing it, which uh, that is what I'm getting here. Okay. And, uh, well, naturally, uh, I want to learn to be able to read again and uh, be able to uh, take care of business after I have transacted business. In other words, it's to get changed over from what you have in education over to uh, braille, and then be able to travel, so you can move about uh, comfortably, not in a constant worry about running into things and and uh, getting lost and this and that. Of course, don't get me that I don't still get lost. <laughs> <laughs> now, Nick, you're a, you're the newest member of this team. What are you doing here? Well. Independence, I think, would sum it up quite well to not always be dependent on somebody else. Yes, sir. Well, now, let me stop and, and see if I get the, to the points you guys made. And, and as a matter of fact, that's, those are two of the three points that I think are the principal reasons for an orientation center. I think the first thing that's necessary, or that's, that's a good reason for having an orientation center, is the one you mentioned, Nick, and that is to to convince a guy with his feelings and his emotions as well as with his mind and what we call his intellect. And it's easier to convince him with his mind than with his feelings, but to convince a man in, in, his, in his emotions and feelings that he can really be independent and lead a normal life again. Now this is rough to do. You can't do this just by sitting down and driving him to the wall and arguing with him. Although that helps. You can argue some with him, but you've got to let up some, too. You can't argue all the time with him. Also, it's a matter of, of argument, but it's a matter of him seeing other people doing it. It's a matter of him seeing himself doing things. Uh, when I say doing it, I mean such things as this travel and reading and a hundred other things. So one thing, the first thing, as far as I'm concerned, is the purpose of a center is to convince a man in his emotions as well as in his mind and by his thinking, that he can really be as independent as other people are, that he can really carry on a fully normal, competitive life. Now that's my way of thinking, is the first purpose of a center of this kind. Now the second one, which is, it goes hand in hand with the first, and you can't have the first without it, I think, is the one Lyle mentioned. That is, helping a man get the techniques he needs to carry on this independence, for instance, uh, no use in a man talking about independence if he really can't walk down the street and get a cup of coffee, if he can't go get a haircut, if it's a woman and she can't go to the beauty shop, if it's a man or a woman and he or she can't go to or from a job, if he can't read telephone numbers, if he can't make notes when he needs to, if he can't go and, and do any shopping for himself, uh, if he can't hold a job and support himself, then it's silly to talk about independence. He isn't independent. He may as well face up to that fact. And he isn't as independent as other people around him in the neighborhood either. So it's the techniques he's got to get. Now, there are two things. And I think there's something else. And I think it's almost as important as the first two. Now, anybody got any ideas about it? Or have, I, have we summed it all up in those two? 
Now we're going to have a long pause if somebody doesn't answer, so I'm going to settle back and smoke my pipe. Finish your game again? Well, let's see. Let me, let me, get, let me get this this lady over here, Lyle, since I got you on the first one. Thank you. Who's that over there? Pat. Oh. Uh, the Pat. thing that I was going to say was to help help a uh, person to gain self-confidence, but you've really said that already. Mm -hmm. That right, comes in under number one. Mr. Jim? Yes. I'm not even sure. Mm -hmm. A little louder, Jim. Um. I'm getting hard of hearing these days. In some way, helping others to find this independence and learn techniques. I wonder if this would be included. I think this actually is a part of of of, of, of believing yourself that you can be independent and thought. that you can carry on. And I think that's true because of this. At first. You don't do much of that because a poor man can't afford to be generous. He hasn't got anything to give. Uh, after you get a little confidence in yourself, an important part of it is helping newer students and helping bolster the general morale. This is an important part, I believe, of, of achieving the first point, the, the real understanding of the fact that you can actually carry on normally and competitively. No, I won't do. The realization that you can carry on normally and, and as independent as other people are and the business of learning techniques. And then I think there's a third one, and I think it's just about as important as the first two. Mr. Jernigan? Yes, sir. Earning a livelihood, did that come out of your first point or that? That would also enter in very much of a thing. Well, th it has yeah, something hey, to do with what I'm talking about. Um, this has to do with the public attitudes about blindness and your and your reaction to those. Now, as I see it, the overall business that Lyle commenced by talking about, the thing of coming to the center because somehow you were not clicking exactly as you wanted to click in the way of uh, earning a living and supporting yourself and carrying on in a fully competitive, independent way in the community in every sense of the word, you come to the center, and there's got to be a reason for that. Otherwise, you just wouldn't take the time out to do it, because the, the room and board here just isn't that good. So you wouldn't take your time out to do it. Now, why? Well, the first one we said was the business of coming to realize fully with your emotions as well as with your mind that you can be fully independent. The second one, the second one is getting the techniques involved that will enable you to be independent. And I think the third one, as I said, is just as important, and it is this, that even after you've got those first two that I've talked about, I think unless you come to realize what public attitudes are about the blind and what the general notions about you as a blind person are, unless you come to learn something about those and to understand why they are as they are, and then unless you get so that they don't throw you, upset you, trouble you, uh, and so that unless you, unless you can get so that you can handle those and cope with those in the world, you're still likely to be a failure, I think, because the public attitudes about blindness are what they are. Now, you've got to do something about changing those, especially insofar as the public comes into contact with you. If you don't, you're going to find yourself uh, constantly in one way or another in trouble or uh, upset emotionally by people treating you as if you were everything from a genius to a baby. I use the word baby in the terms of, of being a small child, not in some of its connotations. Now, um, what about um, what about this? Do you, do you think this third thing I've talked about, uh, do you think that makes any sense? You, well, really, I think that's the most important of all. <laughs> Lyle, who is the public? If we're going to have to understand public attitudes about the blind, and we're going to have to learn not to let those attitudes throw us, then who is the public? It's the brother on the street. Well, I agree. It's the brother on the street. How Every about man you meet? Your own your, family? Uh, your own family, your own relatives, yeah. and your own... Uh, 
Yeah. Regardless of who he is, if you're competing against him, you've got to prove to him that you're equal to him. How about your fellow student at the orientation center? Is he part of the public? Absolutely. Well, now, stop. Well, now stop all of you and think about the implications of that. you got to understand, come to understand why public attitudes about the blind are what they are, and you got to learn what to do about those and not to let them upset you emotionally or throw you. That's, that's, that's the statement. And then we go on to say that the man on the street your family, your relatives, and your fellow students at orientation are the public. You think about that a little. <laughs> well, what do you say? How about yourself? Well, I guess you're part of the public. Uh, but you see, assumedly, you take in your part of the public in the first thing I mentioned, you know, the business of you've got to learn to realize emotionally as well as intellectually that you can be in, as independent as other people are, that is, interdependent with other people, and that you can carry on a normal life. That takes care of your part of the public. But every other person you meet then becomes the public, doesn't he? Well, now, I must have had something in mind to start out all, all this rigmarole. I must not have just drawn this out of the clear blue, don't you guess? <laughs> you first time you did. <laughs> well, look at here. I understand. Now, we're talking in the family here, so all of you now remember I'm part of the public, so don't, let, don't get upset at me when I talk to you about things. <laughs> See, I tried to build in some defense for myself before I started. <laughs> I understand that you guys had quite a discussion at the student body meeting last night. Look, I'll leave that. I'm part of the public now, so you can't get upset with me. Did you really think this was coming out with Yes, I did. Oh, Alvin, I'm losing my technique. I'm getting so I can't start off obliquely somewhere and come at you from the side there. <laughs> well, I didn't say anything, but I was thinking a lot. <laughs> well, okay. Now, I wish to talk to you. As I understand it, Alvin, you, you correct me. As I understand it, uh, the statement you made or that was made, and remember I got this third or fourth hand. Uh, I understand that the statement you made was that the partials ought to clean up the tables up here, those guys with partial sites, and that the totals ought to go downstairs and uh, and our traditions. And well, that sounds down. like a very interesting meeting. <laughs> My men that the totals blew their lids and got they, they didn't follow the injunction about the public, you know. And, uh, <laughs> and a good time was had by all. <laughs> you see what you meant, Hazel, by not being a decent person? I can't solve the problem. Mr. Jane? Sure. Well, I don't think I took it the same way that everybody else did. I, I gathered that this was just a way of dividing, just like if you went down the line and say everybody with black hair, you do this, and everybody with red hair, you do this. Well, now let me ask now, you well, something, uh, Craig. Yeah. In the first place, do you really believe that? In the second place, <laughs> in the second place, uh, you know, now we ought to we ought to really level with each other in here. In the second place. Suppose you had two kinds of dogs, and you had everybody black on one side and everybody white on the other side, or red, as you said. And is that likely to be that all the guys will have particular abilities who are black and all those who are red will have another? Oh, I don't imagine, but when you're working with a group and you start dividing, uh... Oh, well, answer the first part of your question. Mm -hmm. Well, then, uh, that's the way I took it until everybody started fighting over it, mm -hmm. and then I, then I didn't, well, I just uh, decided to pass it off. Well, we'll ask Aldine what she meant in a minute, but let's speculate in her presence on what she meant first. <laughs> uh, can you believe Aldine really, uh, do you believe she had in mind that the guys with partial sight probably could move a little more rapidly and probably could clean the thing up a little, a little quicker and a little easier, and that it would be probably a more efficient division of the work 
if the guys with total flight uh, did, the, the dishwashing so they wouldn't be moving around. Do you, do you believe that's the case, or do you believe she really thought, irrespective of sight, now this person will be more efficient here or the other person there? Mr. Goody, no, I'm going to work on Craig a little first row. <laughs> well, <laughs> Craig is undertaking to convince me of a sophisticated doctrine here. <laughs> <laughs> he may be right, but I, we'll ask you after a while, but let's ask Craig now. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I may be wrong, but my, uh, <laughs> you may be right, too. Now, now you're, uh, you're putting thoughts in my mind. <laughs> well, I'm not asking you if they're there. <laughs> No, and, and when she when she first came out with it, that's the way I I took it to that uh, this was a uh, this was an easy way of dividing because it was uh, go ahead now an like easy way about, of dividing why huh because it seemed like that this would divide it about equally equally between what and what. Well, to get part of them upstairs and part of them downstairs. And, and, and it just so happened that the guys who were downstairs were totally blind and the guys who were upstairs had partial sight. That's right. Well, as far as I'm concerned, she might have said, well, the partial go down the stairs and get the total the stairs stairs right here. <laughs> but, you, but you do think, then, that she made a division on the basis of total and partial. I thought, I think that, uh, I, I'm going from what I thought at the beginning, say. I thought at the time that this was a, this, uh, division between total and partial was an easy thing hanging right out there, just as if you, well, like I said, it was, uh, everybody with black hair do one thing and everybody with red hair. But there must have been a reason for that division rather than, than taking everybody whose names began, let's say, with a letter before H and everybody after H do something else, don't you think, Craig? Well, I think because we have so, we're always uh, talking about either the the, uh, the totals or the partials here. That well, that made an easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, aren't we? Uh, every time uh, one of us partials do something, you just say that. Well, only the, well, the partial could be something like that. You know. <laughs> I, 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 I deny that I've ever said that, Greg. Well, I'm going from the group here. Oh well, I, I refuse <laughs> to be bound by what the group does. I, I tell you that I have never said that. Uh, or, or I, I put it another way: Have you? Do you remember? I haven't heard you say oh, that. There, right. I'll answer your question. Oh, that's all. Well, now, now, Craig, what do you believe, though, that the the purpose of the division was. We have arrived at the fact that, that there was a division made in, of two groups and that it seemed to you, as you say, a logical division. Now, I wish to know what you believe that, that the logic or the purpose of the division was. Now, you, you search your soul now. Be honest with me, Craig. <laughs> It's hard. As I say, well, I got thinking out. about it after everybody yeah. started fighting about it. How do you going... expect employers to be honest with us if I can't even get you to be honest well, with us? <laughs> I have to go back and think of what and I was the way it struck me at first. Say. I'm going by how it struck me in the beginning. Mm. It struck you as a very logical sort of division. It struck me as just what it seemed to be at the time. This was an, it was an easy way of dividing. Yeah, and I want to know why it was easy. Huh? Uh, well, well, I suppose that... Uh, is it any easier than doing it alphabetically? Or by how, or by men and women, say? Or by, um, oh, let's say those who live in northern Iowa and those who live in southern Iowa. Well, I know that. So why, that number. <laughs> why is it easier? Tell me that. I want to know why it was easy. Well, leaving you out of it, it still comes and falls down that we discuss the partials and the totals there. I see. That, that, that's that's, that's a common one. Well, what is the nature of our discussion about partials and totals then? I, let me dig into that with you. What do we say in our division? Oh, here we go. <laughs> well, I'm trying to. I didn't realize this was going on. I just want to know the nature of the discussion. Uh, I don't think it's. Uh, Good question. What is it? Anybody help me? Do you remember Senator Joe McCarthy and how he used to say to a man, Craig, now I've come, come, you aren't being honest with this yeah. committee. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, let me, um, now, Dean, let me talk to you a little bit. And you, uh, don't let this embarrass you. Uh, and don't, uh, you know, if we're really to make our discussions meaningful here, uh, we got to really talk about what we think. Uh, one reason that we don't, I think, um, sometimes really get it. Our problems is that everybody is afraid either he'll he'll look as if he were in the wrong, or as if somebody will think he's uh, he shouldn't have done this or that. Um, well, 
Neither of these is my opinion. Now, I would like, really, sincerely, honestly, I would like to know what you thought at the time. And tell me not what you think I want to hear, but tell me what really you think was the case in your own statement. Well, I'll try and start from the beginning. Yesterday morning, I think it was Gilly, Ruth, and I were downstairs and uh, talking this over a little bit. And, and we just, uh, just said, well, uh, why don't we have the partial upstairs cleaning off the tables and the, and then the the total downstairs starting in on the dishes and then afterward had the partials come down and help with the dishes. Okay. So everybody would be okay. working. Okay, but halt right there. Let's don't go one step further till I till I find out from you what I <laughs> ask of Craig. Why did you make that particular division? Now think and give me your real honest feeling. You know, and I know, you know, I really don't buy what Craig said, that that just happened to be a sort of a, you know, it just sort of fell in the <laughs> shape that way. Uh, just sort of a division, it happened that way. Uh, I don't believe that at all. I don't think Craig believes that. I believe, I believe Craig, I believe Craig would have been hanged by a jury in the state by that. There must have been a reason for the division, and maybe it was a justifiable reason. For instance, I'll tell you this, if we were going to, if we were going to go out here and try to drive a truck, uh, and, and you had a partially sighted guy driving one truck and a totally blind guy driving another one, I'll tell you which truck I'd be riding <laughs> if I could get in it. Now, I want to know, L.D., what your reason was for the division. There was a reason, and you know there was. Well, uh, we thought that the partials probably could do it a little faster. Now, we all have to admit that we know the totals can do it. We know that. And I, I'm convinced of that, too, because I'm I'm just about there myself. Well, but let me stop you there. That doesn't, well, now hold on. That doesn't make any difference, does it? That is, if, if the fact that you are there yourself or that you might become total doesn't make a total any more efficient. Therefore, uh, what I'm saying is the fact that I might be total or partial or have perfect sight should have nothing to do with the objective question as to whether or not a partially sighted person is more efficient at a given task. Isn't that right? Okay, far away. But Just wanted to get that in the record, Alvin. <laughs> there are some people yeah. who are naturally faster than others. Yeah. Don't mm -hmm. you agree? No, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Both in the total division and in the in the partials. Some I, partials yeah. are faster yeah. than yeah. others, and yeah. and uh, there are some totals that, well, they're not. They just they aren't as fast. No, that's right. That's right. I agree. But but are you telling me that it so happens that in our group here, that all of the partials I do nothing to do with it, no. are faster than all no. of the totals who are no. slower than all? Okay. No. Just want to see if I. No, definitely not. I got some questions to ask you people who are totals after a while too. <laughs> I think all Aldine's going to get all these questions. <laughs> I want to ask you how you treated the public too. <laughs> Go ahead, Aldine. <laughs> Well, another thing is, I, I realize the totals can do a fast job, but it, it was just approach strong. It, it just was. But why was it approach strong? Uh, if the partials can really do it more efficiently, wouldn't it be better to let them do it? Mm. Or would it? I don't know. I'm asking you. Mm. Well... I guess at the moment, if I, we, we just thought that they could do it faster. I guess we just did. I see. And, and, I'm, and you say it was approach strong, and I'm asking you now to tell me why it was approach strong. Because we should have had, it had a, mix, <coughs> a mix, mixture of total, a totals and partials. Even though it was less efficient? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, Alvin. See, this just shows you can't please all the people. <laughs> If you put me on a committee with a bunch of partial sighted guys or perfectly sighted guys, and you did that so as not to hurt my feelings, uh, just because we ought to do it, then you would have really insulted me. Uh, you wouldn't have insulted me, incidentally, the other way. You wouldn't have insulted me if you had said to me, uh, look, let's do it this way because this is more efficient. This would have made sense to me. But if you had said, um, or if you're in the back of your mind, even though you've been tactful, you'd put me on a committee 
with a bunch of partially sighted guys just so that it wouldn't hurt my feelings and just so that you would be tactful, then I'd have uh, caught you somewhere in the dark and bushwhacked you. <laughs> so you see, you can't please people, Al <laughs> Well, now hang on, Roy. I'll get to you after a while. I want to work on Aldine here, Mister. What the fuck? Aldine, now, do you see my point? Do you really want... Now, translate that on down further. Do you really want uh, the next time I plan something uh, and there are some sighted guys in the bunch and I arrange it so that you get to do something, although I really know you won't do it as efficiently as somebody else, but I do it because I say, well, Aldine will really feel better if she gets a chance to do this. Is that what you really want? No. Okay. Now, uh, neither is what I want. Uh, let me talk a minute to the point, Aldine, of the efficiency. You are a part of the public. Um, all of us here are parts of the public. I have told you more times than one of a story about my my days when I made furniture. I hired all the painting done. I did it because I tried to be a reasonable man, and it occurred to me that on varnishing and staining furniture, well, you've got to be reasonable. A totally blind guy can't stain and get his stains right and varnish furniture. <laughs> except I wasn't right. I had been blind all my life, and I thought I knew. And if anybody had said to me, you know, you're all wet on this, I would have probably told him, well, maybe you think I am, but I've been blind by as long as you have, and I think I know what a blind person can do and how efficiently he can do it. Well, now when I went to California, as I've told you before, I saw at the orientation center totally blind people staining and varnishing, and at first I was skeptical and thought, well, you know, this is going too far. They aren't really doing it right, and, and, and you shouldn't try to do things like drive a cab or something that you can't do. That's not the way you prove your independence. And then I ventured on and thought, well, you know, if, if they can do it, why can't I? And then I went on, and I needed a headboard for my bed, and besides, as a part of my getting acquainted out there, I, I wanted to learn to use all the power tools in the shop that I hadn't seen, and so I started working on um, I started working on uh, some furniture building, and what do you know? Pretty soon I stained and varnished my own headboard to my bed, and then I went around, you know, and examined myself a bit, and then began to, to say to other people, well, you shouldn't sell yourself short, and then I came back and asked, you know, myself, uh, Maybe I was the victim. Maybe I was part of the public. You know, I've always talked about the public learning things. Now, all of that comes back to this, Aldine. Are you sure that the partials can clear those tables more efficiently than the totals? Are you sure? Even quicker than the totals? Maybe you are, but you think about that. I doubt it. Well, I, I know. I know that the partial, uh, the, uh, the totals can, can clear just as fast as the, as the parcels, yeah. Because down well, now at, you've astounded me. Down at home, okay. uh, when I have my sleep shades on, I can't go near it as fast <laughs> as what Billy and Jim can. Well, now let me ask you this, Elsie. I don't want to put you on the witness stand and cross-examine you exactly, but let me, let me refer to the record. You said to me a while ago, and I, I guess, Manuel, you taping this? Yes. Oh, uh, I'll, go back and play the tape. I'll go back and play the tape to you, L.D. You said that you did this because it was more efficient for the parcels to do it. Now you tell me that you believe the totals can do it as rapidly as the parcels. Yes? Okay, well, why doesn't anyone think that doing the dishes is just as important as setting the table? More fun than anything. <laughs> I believe that the objection was not in that. I believe that uh, that the the objection was in the fact that Aldine has already stated to us that she felt that the totals couldn't do it oh. as efficiently, and that the partials could do it more efficiently. Now she said this uh, with all kindness and all goodwill, and she squirmed about it and didn't want to say that, but that's what she ultimately said. And I drove her to the wall on it, if you observe. <laughs> okay, now. And, uh, and you notice I didn't press her about that employer business either. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> All right, now let me talk to, let me first tell you, and this may shock some of you, or you may think I'm not telling you the total truth, I don't even know which of you are total and which are partial. Uh, well, I know that may sound hard to believe. I know some, I know, for instance, that Jan has partial sight. Um, I know that Karen is total. Craig, I, I, I assume from the way you're arguing uh, that you are partial. <laughs> I don't know that. Partial. Partial. Yeah. I assume also. I don't know. Neil, do you have any sight? Yes. Okay. Well, I, I didn't know. Um. Because we only take blind people in this center. <laughs> I'm concerned. Now, look. I, don't misunderstand me. I, while we're recording, I want to put into the record that uh, I'll try to build a record here. I'll put into the record that. I have never said that sight is not valuable, and I have never said to you that you should not use what sight you have and that it will not be a help to you. What I have said is this, that there are techniques for getting along in the world as a blind person which are just as efficient as the techniques that are involved in the use of sight. And I have said this to you also, if a person has some little sight, he should learn the techniques of a totally blind person, if he's, if he's within the definition of blindness. He should learn the techniques of a totally blind person so that he can really make a judgment. And then, if those techniques are most efficient for him in a given instance, he ought to use them. If they are not, then he ought to use sighted techniques. And he ought, in any case, to use his sight, whatever he may have, as an auxiliary. But the danger with some people with partial sight and what sometimes occurs is that as long as they can, they try to use sighted techniques and end up being more or less efficient than if they use the techniques of a totally blind person. This happens. It doesn't always happen, and it need not happen, certainly. Sight ought to be an asset any time. Now, for instance, I think I gave you the example of, of what one student said to me. In fact, Revan said this to me, Revan Jinx. Some of you know her. Yes, most of you do. Last summer when she came into the office and said to me, you know, I've made a discovery, and she seemed quite surprised at it. And the discovery is that when I travel with my sleep shades on, I travel more efficiently than I travel with them off. And I said, that tells you a lot. That tells you that you're trying to use techniques that you have no business using when you've got your eyes open. If you would use the techniques of a totally blind person and use that sight as a auxiliary, you'll find that you travel at least as well with the sleep shades off as you do with them on and probably better. Well, that seemed to make sense to her, so she worked along that way. Now, uh, let's see. Carol, I'll commence with you, because I know you're totally blind. <laughs> okay. How did you treat the public? Let me find out if you... Oh, I see them. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I said, L.D., yeah. why did you divide this this way? Yeah. And he said that he thought it was more efficient that way, and I convinced to tell them that I thought I could clear a table as fast as the parcels could. Yeah. And then I kind of shut up because I figured I said enough. Yeah, well, I think that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, now let me say two things to you, Karen. I've told Aldine some things I think she ought to think. Now let me tell you and any other people who are in this room who are totally blind some things I think they ought to consider. In the first place, remember what I made is the third point. That one thing you've got to learn is how to deal with public attitudes about the blind, to understand why those attitudes are as they are, and never, ever, <laughs> never to let them make you mad. Now, those three things you've got to do. If you don't, if you don't, you're cruising for trouble. Um, and besides, from that you won't accomplish your purpose. Uh, for instance, if I have um, somebody come up and uh, well, let's say it has sometimes happened. If I'm trying to get in, if I'm getting into an airplane, and I sit down in the seat, and the stewardess insists on buckling my seat belt for me, and insists almost that I can't do it, and if I get mad and snap at her, uh, I haven't convinced her anything except that blind people are not only helpless, but that they're ill-tempered on top of it. So I haven't really accomplished a thing. Uh, if, for instance, a man tries to take me by the arm and maneuver me somewhere, and I try to show him that he ought to do it another way, and he insists on taking me by the arm, and I say, you know, if you weren't so stupid, you'd know better. Uh, anybody with any sense ought to know that that's not the way to do it. He will then uh, not be convinced. I've embarrassed him, and furthermore, I've made no convert out of him. He'll, he'll have nothing good to say about blind people after that. Uh, now, 
what I really ought to do is try to find a way so that he doesn't lose any faith in the business. And I certainly have no business getting mad in the business because, or letting myself become emotionally involved at all, not even talk about getting mad, but emotionally involved because I've got an education job to do. I've got, a, I've, got something, I've got something to accomplish. I've got no business letting myself get involved. I can understand why he does it. So I begin by saying something like this. Well, uh, you know, uh, if you don't mind, let me take your arm. And then I go on pretty quickly and say, uh, I think this is something that almost any sighted person tends to do, is take a blind person by the arm. As a matter of fact, I think I tend to do that. It's the, it's the logical thing. It seems to make sense. But um, until you have ex explained to you, and then it's clear why you need to do it the other way. What you really ought to do is, if I take your arm, you see, that leaves me a half a step behind you uh, when we're walking together, and I can sort of anticipate your movement to tell when you're stepping up and, and down and how, how far and also when you're turning, and it makes it a lot easier. Whereas if you have my arm, uh, it puts me in front of you, and I can't tell which way you want me to go. And this, uh, this is really the reason. Uh, if you do it that way, you know, he feels complimented. You've told him that he did what was the logical thing to do, and it's intelligent to be logical, so you've told him he's a smart fellow, you know that. He likes that. And you've also told him that that's what you would tend to do, so that makes some kinship, you know. And then you've told him, you've told him a secret. You, you and he now share a confidence, you know, in effect. You and he know something which most other people don't know. And so he feels real good about this, whereas if you tell him, you know, you stupid mudhead, let me take your arm, why... <laughs> he gets mighty mad about it. Now, I'm not suggesting that you call out these names. In the <laughs> well, I say I'm not. Uh, but, uh, looky, one thing that I'm saying to you is, when you, get your, when you get your emotions involved, you can't do what you ought to do. And second, and second, have you considered the fact that um, uh, you don't if you get your emotions involved, demonstrate an understanding of why public attitudes are what they are. Almost everybody believes that a partially sighted person can clear a table more efficiently than a, than a, a, sighted per, uh, than a blind person. And since they believe that, it's logical that, that our students are going to believe that. Some are going to leave here believing that. But also, uh, students are in different stages of development, and it's a matter of, of each of us educating the other. I may, for instance, find myself very often uh, in a situation where I realize that one of my attitudes is a carryover from the public notion about blindness, and I didn't realize it. And I, I can learn from you the same as you can from me, and vice versa. So an understanding of the public attitudes. And then there's a third thing, Karen. And I guess, well, who else is total in here? Let me just talk to Karen. Who else is totally blind? Who is that? Delia. Oh, Delia. Are you total? Mm -hmm. Well, I thought you were part of your site. No. Jim's <laughs> total. Jim? Okay, that's true. Roy. And Roy. He got it coming. Four of you. Well, okay. Now, I, I, I intend, as soon as this discussion is over, promptly to forget it. And, but I want it for this discussion. Get it. Roy, you're on as soon as I get through with Karen. <laughs> um, uh, are you sure, you total, that you have so conducted yourselves in the past that if people had any reason to believe you could do these things efficiently. See, look here. We as totals, just as we as partials, or we as perfectly sighted people, or we as Americans, or we as humans, are lazy. And we tend to get out of whatever we can. And also, I must say that the great temptation for a blind person is to want his cake and eat it too. That is, to insist when he wants to do something, look, I'm as capable as anybody else. Don't come telling me I can't do it. And then on the other hand, if it's raining, let's say, and somebody says, well, never mind, I'll, uh, I'll step out here and do this, or um, if it's something that's to be carried and it's heavy, or if it's something that has nothing to do with whatever with blindness, but that somebody wants to do, which is more than their share, the great temptation is to let them do it even though he knows it's being done because they feel he can't do it as a blind person. Well, now, you can't have your cake and eat it, too. What I'm saying is, you, you guys who are total, have you taken advantage of your total blindness? Have you at times let the partials do things while you sat back and didn't do your share? Um, and therefore, if you have, you have contributed to the very attitude which you then would complain about. 
or should I say we have contributed, since I happen to be totally blind too. Now, this happens. <laughs> well, you can meditate about that. See, I'll what I asked him was as bad as what I asked you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you see, uh, I'm, I've never been a total, and, and I'm just going into this thing, and, and I don't... I, I don't know what I would do as a total, and, and I, I think I, when, when it does come, I, I would feel just as they did. I know. Look, as far as I'm but concerned, Aldine, you are blind in the same way they are. You are you are blind and they are blind. You have somewhat, a, you, you, I don't know whether I've ever talked to you about my definitions of blindness, but as far as I'm concerned, you're a blind person too. Uh, in fact, if you aren't, you have no business under a program sponsored by the Commission for the Blind. This is not a commission for the blind and others. It's a commission for the blind. Okay. Therefore, as far as I'm concerned, I'll be your blind. Let me, let me interrupt you. A story, too, that I told you before, which Mr. Jernigan tells himself about the wood staining. I think uh, this particularly brings out the point if, if totals conducted themselves, in a in such a manner that would lead other people to think that way. You remember the story about about the two chemical engineers that I roomed with in college, and how they decided that I was to wash the dishes and they would do all the cooking. <laughs> you remember all that? Well, I think if I had sat back and and didn't insist that I carry my share of the cooking, such things would prevail. Well, now. I think, Manuel, when I was going to college, if I'm to be perfectly honest, while we're searching our souls, in fact, I, I, let, me, let me just change that. No, you're saying if I had a situation when I was in college where uh, I had a, an illegal arrangement with two other fellows because you weren't supposed to cook in the dormitories and we put blankets up over the door and we were child money, so we put blankets up over the door and we prepared our meals each day. And it was specifically my function to wash dishes. And it was my function, as I think back on it, I deliberately maneuvered to take advantage of my blindness. It didn't occur to them I could do the cooking. I didn't want to do the cooking. I didn't like to do the cooking. <laughs> and so I encouraged them in their belief that a blind person uh, really wouldn't be able to do that efficiently. I probably would have had some little resistance, but I, I could have got to do part of the cooking. And I really should have to have carried my fair share of the load, perhaps. I don't know. I guess I should have. You see the old manual, and in my case, I didn't take that, that road you took. Well, that's right. And for instance, in our case, I told you that we divided the clean three times a week so that I took my turn. Now, I could have easily gotten out of that. Easily. Uh, so, I say, you can't, you can't blame uh, uh, this case. Uh, don't forget that our students are coming in, the ones who lost their sight recently, with public attitudes. And have you, Manuel, told these people about the discussion you and I had long ago about... Um, about the people who are long time blind and newly blind and their relative efficiency rates? No, I don't think we've gone into that. You haven't done. Well, I, since I showed up so poorly in this, I spared <laughs> 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 I'll tell them about that in a minute. Roy, I cut you off two or three times, and I didn't mean to I didn't mean to cut you off, but I was trying to pursue Aldine and Karen on this. Now come forth with whatever you got to say. Well, sir, I was just trying to kind of get Aldine off the spot. I, uh, oh, well, go ahead. The way I feel about it, I kind of understand, I think, what the idea was. I think I do, too. I know I can get around pretty awkward myself when it comes to cleaning up the table and stuff, and I can wash dishes or dry dishes just as good as, as I ever did any time in my life. Yeah. And I kind of hang it in a place that, but get up here where totaling and there's a bunch of chairs sitting around in my way and I'd get a tray full of dirty cups and dishes. I'd have a boy if my elbow stuck in one cylinder's face and it hit him over the head and the other hand. <laughs> and I, uh, I think that was more the idea was to let them kind of, because the uh, partials could at least see that dark spot there. And I, the, the spot's always dark out here where I'm looking all the time. Uh, okay, but look here, Roy. Uh, for the first place, now, uh, nobody's going to be cleaning up the tables while these senators and representatives are here. Um, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's inefficient for totals or partials. Uh, we're not going to waste our time doing that at that time. Or not waste it, but we're not going to spend our time doing that. We've got other things to do then. After they're gone, we'll do our cleaning up uh, because the, all of us have other tasks to do during the time they are here. So that's that. But I would say this, Roy. Um, it may be that you haven't yet learned the techniques for doing, for getting around and getting those tables cleaned up, but I believe that you can do that 
as well as the partially sighted one. Well, I can do that at home. I believe you can do it here. But here I'm not going to try it. Okay. Because it's the choice, it's the choice of getting to uh, picking up the dishes and washing the dishes or drying the dishes. I'll help wash and dry the dishes. Yeah, and I'm going to keep trying to maneuver it so that you will try it because I think you ought to try some. That's exactly what we're, what we're trying to do here. Uh, that's, that's the point. Now, let me tell you well, an instance once of, of, of your, your teacher here. See, I told you about my cooking experience in college and how I ducked out on my poor, uh, poor roommates. I'll, I'll get through quickly because I know you've got you to gotta go. But, um, Manuel said to me once, you know, I've done some observing, and it seems to me that if a fellow is born blind, he's been blind all of his life, uh, he hasn't had jobs, and uh, he tends to get lazy, and uh, it's really it's harder for him to do anything with himself, in effect, uh, than a fellow, let's say, who's newly blinded. We were talking about students at uh, a given uh, place. As a matter of fact, this happened to be the California Center, and he said, now this and this and this person who's newly blinded, uh, really, you know, he's been accustomed, he's had jobs, he's been out in the world, and uh, he reads, uh, he really works. And it may be really there's a difference. Well, I listened to this a while, and I argued with him, and I finally said this to him. Now, Manuel, you've got two or three people here involved that you're giving me as examples. I can give you other examples. I started with myself. I said, look, I've been blind all my life. You consider me lazy? Well, no, but you know, you're an exception. <laughs> well, Dr. Kenbrook, he was, he was been blind since early childhood. You consider him lazy? Well, no, he's an exception. Well, Kingsley Price has been blind most of his life. He's, he works like the Dickens. Do you consider him? Well, no, he's an exception. I said, look, how many exceptions are you going to give me? <laughs> then I went on and said to him, Manuel, do you realize that the television and other such things have come about uh, so that very few kids graduating from high school read so that anybody's proud of them. As a matter of fact, this is a kind of a national uh, scandal that people don't read very well. So you take a blind guy who admittedly is perhaps lazy, uh, but you forget all the lazy-sighted kids there are. Now, where do you get off telling me that, that because he's born blind that made him lazy? Or he didn't have jobs? Well, he finally wilted and backed down on this, but what, the reason I tell you this is to illustrate the fact that all of us, I have done this, I may do it again, I hope I won't. Manuel has done it, he may do it again, I hope he won't. <laughs> Aldine has done some of this, uh, and I hope she profits by this. Roy has done some of this, Karen has been involved here, Jim has, and perhaps all the rest of us in this room. Now, if you're going to get anything out of this center, I think one thing you've got to get is a real examination of what fact and what is just stuff that you've become accustomed to because that's the way the public looks at the blind. Well, look, I began by saying to you that as far as I'm concerned, the purpose of the, the center is threefold. It is to begin with, to help a man come to a realization of the fact that he can be as independent as other people are. And I mean that, literally. And the second one is to learn the techniques which will enable him to do it. And the third one, the one we've talked about today principally, is the business of helping him come to understand why public attitudes are what they are about the blind, coming to the place that he doesn't get thrown by those public attitudes and get emotionally hurt or upset about them, and finally, conducting himself in such a way as not to so take advantage of his blindness that he encourages the public attitudes at times to be what they are. And having said all that, Aldine, I would say to you that I think what you did, you know, yes, yesterday and last night was a was a service. It provided us with at least one class. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. Thank you. Indeed, we're never going to have any time. I think I think it's really important. Don't you know? Remember, I think I just want to reemphasize that 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 blind guys, and I know I've done this myself too, lots of times. You you kind of conduct your yourself so that. Uh, uh, in my case, most times it's been so that the so that the sighted person does everything. And as Mr. Jernigan says, you can't have your cake and eat it too. So yeah, but it's fun to try. How many guys? How many guys can help you with this helping Mr. Hefner to cook now? <laughs> well, we'll see you guys. Okay. Well, Craig, I forgot to give you equal time. I'm sorry. Well, next time, Daniel will give you equal time. Equal time, make my job.